Hello class. Um, in this video, we are going to be creating a virtual machine with Lubuntu, which is a flavor of Ubuntu designed for um, designed for older computers that don't have very powerful hardware. Now, you should use this version of Ubuntu in your virtual machine if you don't have a very good computer. If your computer is like four gigabytes of RAM, you know, and it's not very very powerful, but but it can virtualize. You should opt for using this version instead because it's a, it's much much uh, faster than the default version of Ubuntu that we're using, which is the default uh, Ubuntu. However, um, just be aware that it's a more rudimentary operating system, so a lot of the fancy things available in Ubuntu won't be available here, and it takes a little bit of use to. But it has a familiar interface, so I'm pretty sure you'll be able to pick it up pretty fast. So the first thing we need to do is go to lubuntu.me and then click on get lubuntu. We're going to work with 21.10, the latest version. Click on desktop 64-bit. You can also use the 2004 uh, if you want to, but the 21.10 is good enough. Click on uh, desktop 64 and when the download is done, uh, we will start building our virtual machine. Now let's going to click on new. We're going to name this Lubuntu CIS. 106 click on next in the amount of RAM here I have tried to work with one gig of RAM only and it doesn't run very well like it's not usable so I suggest you bump it up to either two gigabytes uh, 248 or uh, 1.5 gigabytes uh, 1500 um, I say stick to two gigabytes of RAM if you have at least four gigabytes of RAM in your computer. This is going to make it a little bit better. So click on next, click on create, next, next. Uh, 40 gigabytes is fine of this of disk space. We're not going to need more than that in this VM. And we're going to go with settings and same thing. We're going to enable this to be directional. We're going to go system over here. We don't need a floppy disk. Now, when it comes to CPU, if you can't afford two, two cores, please give it two cores. But if you have a dual core computer, but it has a very, you know, a, a dual core CPU, but at least a 3.5 or a 2 point something, then stick to one core. My recommendation is two. If you can't afford two, do two. Only do one core if you cannot afford more than one core, more than two cores. So let's go to display. All the way to 128 and let's enable 3d acceleration in the storage you want to click on empty little disk choose disk file lubuntu 21. we don't need audio network we're going to leave it as is we're going to leave the rest as is and we're going to click on ok let's turn this virtual machine on let's bring this over here click enter on here and this installation is just the same as, uh, as installing ubuntu it's a different installer but it's equally as friendlier. It's equally as friendly. It's very easy to use, and it's very guided as well. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. We're gonna close that, and we're gonna double click on install Ubuntu. And yes, that's fine. That my time zone is correct. My keyboard is correct. We're gonna erase the entire disk, and we're gonna click on next. Here, we're gonna provide our name. Mine is gonna be a student. Yours is gonna be your Blackboard username. As a matter of fact, why don't I do that? Uh, I'm just gonna do Linux Workshop, uh, and then provide the name of your of, of your user that you're gonna log in with, which is normally your name. And then what's the name of the computer? CIS106, and then the password. I'm gonna go with my ultra secure password. You all know it. And then we're gonna click on next. Here we're gonna click on install, install now. And I'm gonna go grab a cup of coffee. You should do the same. Okay, now that the installer is done, we are going to make sure that we have these options checked up and we're going to click on done. Quick reboot. Press enter over here. Now let's log in. And 
now we're gonna go to our website because the rest of the instructions that we need are over there and we can copy paste the commands as well to make our life a little easier cis106.com let's start this right here as well because why not you guys remember lab number two this was when we did the installation so we're gonna go all the way down and there you go over here question number five um, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna update the system so why don't we copy that and go to system tools open a terminal and do a quick update real quick paste clipboard enter hey let's wait until the update is done so that we continue okay now uh, if the update is taking a while be patient this is a very big update and because of that I'm going to reboot the computer as well before I continue with the installation of software there was a lot of packages that got updated including the kernel and a bunch of drivers so let's do a reboot let's click on yes over there okay Now let's install the guest additions. We're gonna copy this. And let's wait until it's done. Okay, now let's do another reboot real quick. Okay, so once the computer boots in and you sign in, make sure that you install this, which is the guest additions. Um, before I used to have it as a single command but I split it up because if you're installing a distribution like this one that has a massive update pending you know running all of these commands in, a, in one shot you know can cause troubles so we did an update then we installed the build essentials and Linux headers then now we are installing the guest edition so we're going to let me see minimize and it's almost done this doesn't take that long and once we have completed this part over here, we are going to jump to installing um, VS Code and then installing the necessary extensions of VS Code. Okay, now we are going to reboot this virtual machine. On maximize and then maximize perfect now let's try the drag and drop perfect okay now we're gonna open Firefox one more time and we're gonna download VS Code real quick so let's go to VS Code download that package and wait until this file is done downloading bingo now let's open a terminal and let's do sudo apt install period for slash downloads co and then tap for autocomplete And let's wait until this installation is done, which should be very fast because again, this is only one program that we're installing and it doesn't have that many dependencies either. Okay, now we can open VS Code. Let's go, yeah, yes, we don't need that open for now. Here, programming VS Code. Okay, let's put this on the side and let's put this on this side over here. OK, 
Okay, we need the following extensions. Let's go all the way down. Live server. Live server. Stop. Then we need markdown all in one. Markdown all in one. Then we need preview enhance, which should be here. There you go, right there. We also need markdown PDF, which is right here. Markdown table of contents, POC, oh, POC, which is right here. And PDF preview, PDF preview. Finally, I call the spell checker. And we are done with Markdown. We can close here. Next, um, we need to install these applications, but we can easily do it with these three commands over here, this single command over here. So we don't have to open the software center. Okay. Then we need to install these programs over here. We can run these commands one after each other. We are not going to do this part over here because we're not using GNOME. We're using a different desktop environment, LXQt, and things work differently in this desktop environment. So this we are going to skip, but this we need to install. And after we're done installing this, we're going to set up our, uh, our GitHub account in this computer and set up our Git name and everything. Okay, now let's start with the first one. This one over here, we are not going to install because again, we're not using GNOME, uh, so we don't really need GNOME tweaks, but we do need this. So these two guys, we are gonna copy here. Let's delete some of this, paste it here. Let's run these commands. And we have a little error over here, so let's fix that space enter okay over here we're gonna tap space left space and continue okay and then uh, this you're gonna skip we're not gonna we're not gonna use this in this installation so we can move along and we are not gonna do this for now we already have flame shot installed so if you go over here and you go to graphics you see that flame shot has already been installed in the system and we have a little icon over here that we can use to launch flame shot if we need it so now we're gonna set up git in github and the first thing is we are gonna log in so let's go to github.com
done save and we're in then we're gonna set up our username and password so first let's set up the username my username is Linux workshop workshop 67 and my email is Now let's generate an SSH key. I'm gonna press enter over here, enter over here, enter over here, and we're almost done. So now we're gonna display our public key. Copy this, and we're gonna go to GitHub, Settings, SSH and GPG, New Key, let's give it a name, paste over here, make sure you don't have a trading space, and then add SSH key. Now that we're done, we're gonna paste our SSH key, make sure that we did it correctly. And let's type yes over here. And yep, we successfully authenticated. So we're good to go on that regard. Next, we are gonna clone our GitHub repository. So my GitHub repo is this one over here. CIS 106 Spring 22. This is the GitHub repo that I've been using. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do git clone. So first we're gonna do CD, make sure that we're in our home directory. And then we're gonna do git clone, git at github.com column your github username in my case is linux workshop 67 slash your github repo cis 106 spring 22 if we go over here cis 106 spring 22 make sure everything is spelled correctly and press enter now if you do an ls command, notice that you have your GitHub repo over here. And we can successfully close this. And if you go over here and you open VS Code, and you click on open folder, we can get to work now. So I'm going to click on yes, trust author. And just for testing this, around, this, I'm going to create a folder for lab 5. Let's pretend that I'm going to work on lab 5. And then inside lab5, I'm going to create a uh, file called lab5.md. And here I'm just going to say, hey, I am a test file. Let's save our document. And let's open a terminal. And we're going to do git add period. Git commit minus m testing and then git push and if we go to github and refresh our page labs lab number five right there and we have our file over here lab 5md okay with us with that done now you can play around with this system however you like and yeah that's about it if you encounter any issues let me know via slack and we can hop on a call and figure it out Again, this, um, this virtual machine, this operating system, this version of Ubuntu is intended for those who are looking for a speedier system uh, than what we are currently using right now or don't have a computer that is that powerful, you want something very lightweight, very, but that can get the job done, this is for you. Okay, take care, I'll see you next time.